Hello again. Uh, today I'm going to do a quick 100 hour maintenance on this tractor. Um, it's not the most technical video, but I had some people in the comments of my prior videos asking for, uh, you know, how do you do it? Um, so for all those master mechanics out there, video probably isn't for you, but to all those who maybe haven't done this before and uh, would like to learn how to do a quick oil change and, and all the required maintenance at a hundred hours. Uh, let's, uh, let's get going. So for this I just went ahead and took the easy route and uh, got one of these home maintenance kits uh, LG265. Paid about 43 bucks on Amazon for it um, and uh, this is for the X590 and uh, so what you get with that get uh, two quarts of oil. I think it actually takes a little bit more than that so I might have to add my own. Get oil filter, uh, two new plugs and uh, a fuel filter and the air filter and pre-cleaner. So um, get going on this. You know you got your oil drain right here pop that off and unloosen the fill cap to give you a little bit more airflow. Don't forget to open the vent <laughs> on your oil pan and then oil filter is right here. That one's a little stiff. in here. Oh, and in case you haven't noticed, it's best to get the deck off before you start this because otherwise you're not going to have a place to put your catch pan and you're going to get oil everywhere. Alright, I'll let that drain for a minute and then we'll come back. Okay, it's almost done draining now. Uh, one thing, when you have to plug out, just make sure that the, I don't know if you can see it, but there's an O-ring right here, just make sure that that's still there and it's looking in good shape. Um, you're not going to get every single drop of oil out, but once it's dripping like that, it's pretty much done. Before you put the new filter on, my uh, shop teacher long ago told me to make sure you always put some oil in the filter. It reduces the, it gets the oil, well, that way you spend less time waiting for oil to get to the engine because the filters in there are to be saturated. Um, also, you probably spill some oil while you do that, so make sure you lube up the, the ring while you're letting that sit for a minute. Um, you don't want this to get stuck to the engine block. Uh, if this were a vertical installation, I would just completely fill that up until it stops soaking up, where this I have to go sideways on. Um, it actually absorbed all that already, so put a little bit more in. I'm not going to completely fill it because I'll just end up spilling it everywhere. But and once it gets to the engine block, you just need to give it about another quarter turn by hand, and that's all it really needs. Um, you know, check it for leaks every once in a while, but. A lot of people over tighten filters. Uh, they just need to be reasonably tight. Uh, hand force uh, should be enough, and that's all they all that's needed. So, um, you know, make sure you 
take time to clean up everything because that will make a mess. And let me grab my funnel and we'll go ahead and put oil in this. Okay, so to measure the oil, it says right on the dipstick, so hard to miss it, but you don't screw this in, you just set it in and see where you're at. There's still some old oil in there, but it says it's full, but we haven't started it up yet. Um, so the filter, oil filter still isn't completely full, so we'll go ahead second measurement just to double check yeah it's still pretty much at the full mark just a little below but we'll run it for a second let it fill up look for leaks or let the filter fill up and we'll look for leaks and then check it again You just want to give it a minute to let the oil drain back down. Uh, while that goes on, I'll go ahead and clean off the dipstick. See now it's looking much nicer. All the new oils mixed in with the old oil. And now you see it's, yeah, it's still Give it another minute to settle down. There's still a bunch of oil in the dipstick tube. It's messing up the reading. Yeah, so it's only about halfway into the full mark. So yeah, I think it takes like 2.3 quarts. I have to go back and look to be sure, but it does take a little extra. So either buy an extra quart or if you have 1030, uh, John Deere is just 1030 oil, so pretty much any 1030 oil. Pop it off with that. I think that's got it. Check it once more. Yeah, it just needs a little bit more. Good. Yep, we're right at that full mark now, so oil's all done. And it's on to the fuel filter. Uh, fuel lines right here. You take it out here. There's a white clip. Back here, I don't know how well you can see that. I'll bring you in. Um, it's, yeah, anyway, if you wiggle around, you can get this white clip out of here and then bring the whole line up. And 
you know, we don't want to spill too much gas, so just kind of getting this up. I'm letting it drain back. You can't see this, but I can. There's bubbles as the fuel filter drains. And with these pressure clamps, uh, there's a tab on each side, just squeeze them together. The pliers, which I didn't bring over here, so I'm gonna go get my pliers. And uh, before we do that even, Um, I'm going to kind of clean this, these hoses off so that I can avoid getting any gunk into the fuel lines. Alright, All right, so just a matter of grabbing all those pins and squeezing and then you can walk the clip down the hose a bit in theory never works when you're on camera and then a little twisting and it should come out and you're definitely going to spill some fuel it's going to be unavoidable but and let that drain for another second while I get the other filter out. <coughs> I'm go ahead and plug this in. Got one side done. Like I said, you're going to spill fuel no matter what you do. You just don't want to do it real low or else you'll have fuel running out as opposed to just what's in the filter spilling out. So alright. Suppose if you could you could probably jack up the front end of the tractor up nice and high and that would help as well in terms of getting all the gas towards the back in the tank. But alright, once you got everything plugged in, just get those clips back to where they were on the hose. Give it a quick test and then put everything back where it was. All we have left now is air filter and spark plugs. So let me get reset and we can go do that. Okay, the kit comes with two NGK spark plugs. Um, they're have a little protector on it pre-gapped so all we have to do is make sure you careful pull that straight out um, you don't want to damage your wire just got to take out the old plug Too much build up. Looks like it's been running well. Double checking it, it's the same spark plug.
and similar to the oil filter you don't need to crank these in I don't know if this will show up but even the instructions show just turning it just a little less than maybe well less than a quarter of a turn once it gets down to flush so you don't need to crank this And we just do the same thing on the other side, and we're done with that. So I'll go do that, and we'll do the air filter afterwards. Okay, so this is pretty easy. You just twist these off, and there's your air filter. Undo the band clamp. No tools required. Take out the old filter. Put the pre-screen on the new filter get that in and tighten it back up now I did put just like a teaspoon of oil and worked it all through the outside filter there and uh, just helps trap a lot of the extra dust and all so done one thing to look at when you're, after you pull the old air filter off, if I can focus, come on, there you go, you can look inside and see how it looks inside, and you can see this is still nice and white, so we haven't really had any dirt and creeping in, and uh, so that's a good sign, and both plugs are, you know, they don't have a lot of buildup on them. Looks like they've been burning at a good temperature. Um, so, looks like the engine's healthy. That's all there is to it. Um, the last thing, as part of the maintenance you want to do, is just take a look around. Get you, If you don't have a grease gun, get yourself a grease gun. And then go all around the machine looking for little studs like that which are your grease zerks you just push the grease gun onto that give it a couple pumps make sure everything's lubed up and that's all there is to it uh, that takes care of the hundred hour maintenance uh, you know there's the let's see lift the whole tripod up here but there's you know right in your chart here there's the uh, 100 hour maintenance, um, everything you're supposed to do listed right here and uh, so I'll just do some cleaning, uh, look at all the belts, tire pressure, all that good stuff but the consumable work is done here and uh, next time I have to change the transmission oil I'll do that as well and uh, that's that. Let me know if you had any questions down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.